Ahmed has been freed. He's a South African photographer who was kidnapped in 2017 in Syria. Let's now go to Dr. Imtia Suleiman of The Gift of the Givers. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News this morning. Take us through what you know at the moment. We seem to have lost Dr. Imtiaz Suriman of the Gift of the Givers. That breaking news coming in reports that photographer who was kidnapped around three years ago in Syria may have had his freedom. Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman and the Gift of the Givers have been, of course, working closely to try and negotiate his release. Uh, the photographer was sent there uh, as part of the Gift of the Givers. And we know that there has been about three years of negotiations of false leads and of videos of that photographer, Shiraz Mohammed, pleading for his freedom. Uh, he apparently sent his ex-wife a message saying that uh, the South African government and the gift of the givers were trying to negotiate his release. And it's been about three years before anything has happened. Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman of Gift of the Givers joins us on the line. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News this morning, Dr. Suleiman. Talk to us about what you know about the possible release of this photographer? Well, it's not so much of a release. Good morning. You know, we got a message from someone who called us yesterday afternoon to say that Shiraz is free, that Shiraz escaped, actually, in their words, he escaped, and that went to a certain area. I can not give too many details, but he will see the details are very sketchy. But they have found him, and that, you know, they, they wanted to make sure, if, and we, so we wanted to make sure it was Shiraz. So we said, are you sure it's Shiraz? They said, yes. So we said, can you send us a picture? They sent us a picture. And then they said, look, we said, thank you very much. We need the picture to pass on to his family. You know, although, and we told him we're not involved in this case anymore, but as a courtesy, we will inform the family. They then said, okay. And then they got back to us a few hours later. They said, within themselves, they took a decision that because we're not involved in the case and they don't know anyone else, they handed it over to the Turkish intelligence. And then they sent us a second picture in the night say this to Shiraz before they handed him over to Turkish intelligence is now safe for them and now let the government follow the processes to bring Shiraz back home. We invite send a message to Minister Minister Naledi Pando last night, the consular services and to other people in Delco. They all acknowledge the messages and I told them now it's their responsibility to speak to the Turkish government to get Shiraz back home. And of course I informed his family too and sent the pictures to them. Mm -hmm. Dr. Suleiman, do we have an indication of when those Turkish authorities and the South African government will make sure that he is home? Well, that's now the relationship between the two governments. The South African government has to contact the Turkish government or vice versa. And between the two of them, the processes generally don't take too long. You know, it just depends how fast the two governments work. But the Turkish have been, besides the hostage situation, they've had the other you know, people who have been trapped in Syria. So, They've been making moves to move as many people, foreigners, out of the country as fast as possible, especially those who have been trapped in other areas in Syria. So we know they're quite keen to move everybody very, very quickly. So I don't think it should be a long process. It just depends how fast our government and them talk to each other. They know about it and we've informed our government. So hopefully it will happen quite fast. Dr. Suleiman, I know that uh, what you're telling us now is, is you, a gift of the givers not being involved in securing that freedom, but you have been involved since around 2017 in trying to secure his release. If you could just give us some insight into the difficulty and the sensitivity around that process. The, 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 the problem is that, you know, at that point we didn't know who took him because he was visiting our hospital. He went to take, uh, he was he's a photojournalist. He wanted to take pictures and carry, carry the story of Syria. And they couldn't understand who would take him in an area that was controlled by a particular group. And over the period of time, we were trying to trace him, you know, and, it, and the, the, in the situation in hostage cases, especially in a war zone, everybody claims they have him. But when, the, when that claim comes, a request for money, $10,000 to inform you, $20,000 we can get information. So there's a, a lot of people take chances. And you have to filter out what the chance, who the chances are and where the information is genuine. And that's a complicated process. And also you have to make sure that once you make contact with the, uh, the captives, you know, or the captives, sorry, you keep the role of the negotiation line open to, to get to some kind of, of finality. Because there was no request, there was no demand, nothing was told to us. And that process took place up till September last year. And eventually in September last year, somebody called us and said, look, I can help you find Shiraz. So we told him the same thing we told everybody else. Like we there's 100 people, everybody can find Shiraz, everybody knows Shiraz, everybody wants money. And then it died. Nothing happened. 
And then around December or January, January, uh, sometime early this year, a call came to say, look, I can help you, kiss me. So we sent him a list of a couple of questions, you know, no video, just a couple of questions, and said, if, if the person who answers this, there's a need Shiraz, only he will know the answers to that. And within a few minutes, the replies came back, and we checked with Shiraz and Sony. They said it's 100%, it can only be Shiraz who give that answer. A little later, around April, I think it was, they gave us a proof of life video. And the negotiations were carrying on, and, and, and at, at one stage, they wanted $3 million. It was first $5 million, came down to $4 million, came down to $3 million. We were coming down to $1 million. And as we were making progress, uh, the family then decided they wanted to get somebody else to get involved in Shiraz's case. And we said, look, every family has the right to choose whoever they want. And we withdrew from the case. And since then, we haven't been involved. And now suddenly we get this call, you know, uh, last night, because everybody in Syria knows, like you know, that we were involved in the case. But not many people knew that we had withdrawn in June. Mm -hmm. Do we have insight into why these type of kidnappings happen? Because it's not the first time that a South African national has been kidnapped and then a, a ransom demanded in that region. Well, the, 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 the unique thing about this is that he's a Muslim guy. So that's the unique thing, a Muslim guy being taken in a Muslim country. That's not normal. You know, that doesn't happen normally. It's normally, in the old days, it was all like Europeans or Americans, the people of, you know, uh, European descent or Americans, they were taken as hostage. But in recent years, the pattern has changed because it's no more an ideology or, or a political issue or some kind of statement to make in terms of, or, you know, a political statement. It's not, it's a straightforward money business. Mm -hmm. People have realized they capture somebody, it doesn't matter who it is, whether he has some strong political leaning, whether he's an is a ambassador or he's, you know, some kind of great leader, it doesn't, this doesn't matter anymore. They catch somebody, it has become a money-making business. And in a situation like Syria, you can understand, there is no economy, the country is in total ruins, nobody's working, the fastest way to make money is to capture a foreign, and he's not the only one. I mean, there's been lots of people captured. And now the, the patterns have even changed. The Syrians are capturing Syrians, where they know, okay, this, this Syrian is from a wealthy family, quick way to make money. So it has become a big money business. But they justify it. And in Shiraz's case, they said many times, no, he's an American spy. He's an Israeli spy. He's a British spy. But there's no proof. So they keep on justifying themselves to make themselves relevant. And they say some kind of a spy. And of course, they couldn't put any proof. And the end is all about making money. And to Shiraz's good fortune, you know, luckily he managed to escape from there. Because, I mean, nobody was going to come up with $3 million. They eventually came down to $1 million. And, and nobody was, was going to be able to afford that kind of money. And he would have been there for a long time. Mm. Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman, thanks so much for the update uh, and the information that you've given us. Speaking about the escape of Shiraz Mohammed in Syria, he is apparently now safe with Turkish authorities. And the South African government will negotiate for his safe return home.